Hi, everyone. Good morning. Happy Halloween. This is Kathy Mason from Mason Works Marketing here on Conscious Business Zone with Mark Anthony. Hi, Mark. Hey, Kathy. It's great to be here. Thank you, and happy Halloween, everybody. Yeah, yeah. we're not going to be too scary, right? Well, I mean, the way I look at it, what's scarier than a lawyer who sees dead people? <laughs> So, so everyone, I, I'm so lucky that Mark um, said he would do Conscious Business Zone today. We got to sit together and have lunch at the IONS, which is the International Association for Near-Death Studies Conference. And Mark was a speaker. He's a, he's a well-loved speaker at these events. And um, what I wanted, uh, let me just read a little bit about him so that you get an idea of what a treat this is. And that there's a handful of people that have raised their hands that uh, want to talk to Mark and see if someone cool comes through for them. But um, first, I want you to know that Mark Anthony is a psychic, <clears throat> the psychic lawyer, which those two words together are interesting. It's a, he's a fourth generation psychic medium who communicates with spirits. He's also a successful attorney licensed to practice law in Florida, Washington, DC, and also has uh, is allowed to practice and represent you at the Supreme Court. If God forbid you have to go, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's, he's also a best-selling author of Never Letting Go and Evidence of Eternity, which hopefully we'll get to talk about that a little bit because I'm sure um, a lot of my IONS people will love this. And then he also appears on TV and radio. Uh, he recently appeared on CBS's TV hit show, The Doctors. And he's a featured spe uh, speaker at all sorts of events like the IONS event. Um, we're starting to get people in right now. And, and what you'll see is he's a great guy. And this is not an ego trip. This is really a huge, huge service to all the people to realize that we don't really die. We really go to another area and everyone that you're missing here is really around you or can communicate with you. Right, Mark? That is absolutely correct, Kathy. And uh, I, I appreciate everything that you said. Um, people need to understand that when we die, we really don't because energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. And that's what we've learned in the last 40 years of near-death studies, uh, which I was talking about at, at um, recently at IONS, International Association Near-Death Studies. Yeah. I'm also going to be speaking about this at an international consciousness conference in Puebla, Mexico in March 2020. And, and well, one of the things that, that I do is, you know, for thousands of years, people of faith have told us these things. And now we've gotten to the point where quantum physics is is able to prove this, that when we die, who and what we are, uh, which in matters of faith we call the soul or the spirit, in psychology they call the consciousness, and what quantum physicists call the quantum electromagnetic field within your brain. So since energy is neither created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another, when we physically die, who and what we are continues on and stays coherent. So, so when, when we die though, um, I mean, is it scary what you do? Do you find, <laughs> do you find that, I mean, are, are people, do they look, I mean, they, they're, a lot of this uh, information I've gotten is they look great, they look younger, they're happy. Is that is that the way you see it? It, it is absolutely. Um, when what happens is when I open up to to spirits, and everything I do is about frequency. So, Kathy, when I open up my brain to higher frequencies, spirits come forward, and what they do is they start emitting these electromagnetic impulses into my brain so that I can see them, hear them, and they'll start transmitting information. Initially, I will see them how they appeared prior to passing. You know, because let's say, you know, your father was 95 years old when he died. You know, initially, when I open up my brain. Sorry. Sorry, I'm, I, I pressed the wrong button. Apologize. 
All right. So uh, let's say your father was 95 years old when he died and he comes through initially looking 17 years old and you never saw him uh, when he was 17 years old, then you're not going to recognize him. So they transmit identifiers. But then in many instances, a spirit will morph into a younger version of him or herself. And we also see this in near-death experience studies when people cross into the light and they go through the tunnel and then they will encounter the spirits of loved ones who have passed. The spirits tend to look like they're in their 20s or early 30s. I believe that they do this because what it is, energy is eternal. It never gets old, it never gets sick, it never dies. And spirits will come in and look their best, or they'll morph into a younger version of themselves to let us know that. Um, you know, and I, I, I remember not long after my mother passed, and she came through to me, and she looked absolutely beautiful, like she was maybe maybe 30 years old. And, you know, my parents were a little bit older than that, or a bit older than that when they had me. And I go, Mom, you look so young and beautiful. Uh, you know, why? How? Why do you do this? And she said, because I can. And, and, I, <laughs> and I was like, well, of course. I mean, we could all send me like 22 and perfect. Um, but, but the thing is, it's, it's energy, you know, and they're yeah. letting us know that, no, she wasn't an older woman when she died or, or, you know, your child who, who died horribly from cancer or a loved one who was, was killed in some horrific, uh, traumatic, uh, you know, accident. No, that's not, that's not who they are. Uh, who we are is not what's in the body. It is, it, I mean, it's what's in the body, the electromagnetic energy, but, uh, the body, this is just a shell. It's like a car. You know, when your car stops working, you're not the car. So you get out of the car, you move on, and eventually you get another car. Yeah, yeah. Well, I wish everyone knew that, and that's why I love IONS. I'm a member, and I I love um, what Jackie Arnold, who's on here right now. There's Trina Cooper, you know, Larry and Trina, and Jackie, and, and Kathy Bachman, and Darlis May. So there's a bunch of people, and I've got Noel um, Marshall right here. Who wants to jump on? Is that okay if I start jump having some people jump on with you? You ready? Uh, hold on. Oh. Hold on. <laughs> let, let me preface this. Okay. When when spirits come forward, okay. Uh, sometimes the person that you want to talk to the most may not be the first one in. Other people that you know may come through first. So I'll see things, hear things, and feel things. And when they start transmitting information to me. I will um, describe it and then ask questions such as, do you recognize this or does that make sense? If something doesn't immediately make sense, I, I respectfully request people to avoid what I have termed in my upcoming book, the no, no, no syndrome. <laughs> Some people get into no, 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 and they start shooting everything down. And what happens is um, after the reading, which I've termed the unfolding. It's like a flower. The reading's like a flower, and it begins to open, unfold, and bloom, and the information from the reading will start making sense. Right. And sometimes it doesn't immediately make sense with people, and sometimes they bring up a future event. And if you get into no, 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 and shoot everything down, it's like slamming the door in the spirit's face. It's better to say, let me think about it, or I don't know at this time. Right. Um, okay. So with that being said, okay. all right. Well, um, this is a really, this one of my dear friends. So she, she won't um, be a no, no, no. -er. Well, well, no, I just, I want her to get the most out <laughs> of it. Out. Of, you know, no, no, no. Okay. So. <laughs> no, now you've already been on notice. You can't be a no, 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 -er, Noel, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Well, with a name like I Noel, know, that's such a positive her. name, yeah. You would okay. love all these Thank people you. that are, if they raise their hand. They're all just amazing beings. So, do you, does she need to say anything? Well, I just need to hear your voice. Just, good morning, Noel. How are you doing? Uh, good morning, Mark Anthony. This is an amazing opportunity. Thank you, Kathy, for sharing. 
another one of your amazing people. Yeah. Uh, uh, Noelle, I'm getting a female energy coming through, uh, connected to you, and she feels like she's on the level above you, which would be like parent, aunt, uncle level. And what I'm getting with her is this draining sensation throughout her body. Now, a draining sensation, Noelle, is an indicator to me that she was having difficulty um, eating and holding down food prior to passing. I'm also getting that her passing was not a quick event. So it seems like it was a bit of a decline. Uh, and I'm also getting the sense of her coming in and out of lucidity. So she, she knew what was going on, but there was a lot of difficulty and she was frustrated because she couldn't communicate. I'm also getting, I'm not sure if she was on a ventilator or there was something, um, in uh, obstructing her ability to speak. Does any of this make sense to you? A lot of sense, yes. Okay. Um, does the Aries time frame, and Aries time frame would be between March, um, March 20th and April 20th, and that could indicate significant births, deaths, anniversaries, or events connected either her or you or someone close to you within that time frame. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. Yes, uh, in, in what way? Mm -hmm. Was that when she passed? No, she passed February 13th. Uh, 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 be careful. Don't tell me. Don't tell me. Uh, how does the Aries time? Well, what it is, I don't want people spying into information. All right, your husband is the Aries? Okay, is he still here in this world? Yes. Okay, uh, and the woman coming through, is this your mom? I believe that's my sister. Your sister, Okay. Now, I realize we're at the last day of October, but she is holding up an opal. And an opal is the birthstone for the month of October. And this could be an indicator of a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to her or you or someone close to you within the month of October, unless there's some piece of jewelry with an opal uh, that would make sense to you in some way. Hmm, I have to think about that. Uh, I do have it. A family ring with three opals on it. That would be a yes. yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Because <laughs> well, it takes a while to get warmed up. And what it is, I don't know that you have such a ring, but that's a family ring. And that is of significance between you and your sister. Now, she's back to the Aries, your husband. And she's focusing on him. Is he having any type of, does he either have some type of breathing or asthma or lung type issues? Could be um, an allergy, but she's talking about his lungs. And I'm feeling that this like disturbance like in his either his breathing and I'm getting like this <clears throat> like that unless he's got sleep apnea but I'm, I'm getting this uh, disturbance with his lungs does that make any sense no, not really uh, just he's woken up um, unable to breathe a couple mornings uh, just it, from it, okay, hold, on, hold, hold on you're telling me no and he's had difficulty breathing which wakes him up and I talked about sleep apnea she's you know um, Kathy she's big Maybe time on the no 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 train so we're gonna have to yank her off oh. that, <laughs> okay. so that would be a yes, uh, yes because the spirit of your sister who is an immortal living being is patched into other spirits which are referred to as the collective consciousness and they can draw upon a vast amount of medical knowledge and spirits tend to give me a lot of medical mm. now your husband's had difficulty mm. sleeping woken up um, not being able to breathe she wants to make sure that he gets this checked out now don't panic this isn't the end of the world but what I'm getting is a buildup uh, it could be of mucus uh, mucus phlegm in his uh, bronchial uh, passages and is the capillaries in his lungs and he may need some type of aromatherapy with eucalyptus and menthol because I'm getting the steam therapy mm -hmm. to relieve that also I hate to break this to him he needs to lose about 15 pounds okay she's she's on that because because that's contributing to his um, his breathing and his sleep issues so um, I'll leave that with you okay Huh. Okay, I wonder if that's your brother more yeah, than no. your husband. He's talking, but I'm not hearing him. Oh. No, I said I wonder if that's a brother because Bob's fairly thin. Is your, is your brother, is he heavier? Well, yes. 
Well, uh, look here. I'm, I'm not sitting. Look, she's bringing this up. Now, let me ask you this. Is there anything about your brother within the Aries time frame, births, deaths, anniversaries, or events? Which brother? I have six brothers, so let me think about that for a moment. All right. Well, here's here's the thing. Um, with your husband, he needs to get that checked. And then yeah. she's talking yeah. about a man close to you. Do you have a brother who's born in September? Because I'm getting a sapphire now. Sapphire is, okay, does this brother have a few extra pounds on him? Uh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. My so, Sean. Okay, so that brother is the one that needs to lose the weight because he's courting a heart attack. Your husband needs to get his lungs checked and has to do some um, aromatherapy, menthol, um, like a, a steam therapy to relax his bronchial tubes because there's something going on with him that's involving some type of allergic reaction and uh, she's stepping in to to help him avoid all of that now she wants to talk about you for a second and um okay interesting whenever i see um i was raised in the catholic faith and i don't necessarily um call myself a strict catholic by any sense but when i see an image of saint Christopher. This could mean a few different things. It could mean you either just got back from a trip or you're getting ready to go on a trip, or there's somebody close to you with a Chris Christopher Christine. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm planning that my husband and I are planning a trip to the Holy Land. Wow. We got the St. Christopher, uh, and, and that's coming up. Very good. Um, are you going to go see Masada? Masada. That was one of Herod the Great's fortresses. She says you should go see Masada. She said your husband will get a real big kick out of that one. So I'll, because I'll, okay. you know. I know when people go to the Holy Land, of course you want to see the Church of the Holy Sepulcher and the Nativity and the Wailing Wall and all that. But she's talking about mm -hmm. Masada, Masada. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, that was actually a, a quite, uh, is your husband a history buff, military history buff? Not much, but we, yes. We were just at Antietam and Harper's Ferry, and uh, we love now getting understanding about history. <laughs> You're doing much better. She almost jumped on the no, no, no train, but she turned around and said, no, I don't I, Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So the thing is, if you enjoyed that, Masada was a fortress. And when the, uh, the Jews revolted against Roman rule uh, around the year 78, 79 AD, the Romans sent in a massive army, and um, the rebels retreated to the fortress of Masada, which was built on the top of a mountain, and it was besieged for over a year. And rather than um, be captured, uh, all the, 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 the Jewish patriots um, took their own lives rather than be taken wow. by the Romans into slavery. And it's considered one of the great heroic, you know, fight to the death battles of all time. And the fortress of Masada was, was built under um, the reign of none other than Herod the Great, oh the, the villain of the New Testament, who, um, you know, who, of course, uh, uh, wanted to have Jesus uh, murdered as a baby. And what it is I'm getting from your sister is uh, she's indicating that you will have a very fascinating day at Masada. And she also is telling me about the Mount of Olives, which I believe is associated, okay, with, with the depiction <laughs> of Jesus. And she's telling you uh, that the Mount of Olives, you're going to have a moment, a very special moment together. Oh, oh. So, Wonderful. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to, there are two more people in sure. the area. Okay, so, and you know Trina. We're going to put Trina Cooper on, and then after that, Darlis Mays. Thanks, Noel. Thank you, dear. Good morning, Trina. How are you doing? Good morning. How are you? Just a I'm, little cold here. <laughs> it's cold where you're at? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I live in Central Florida, um, right near the. Uh, were, you, were you at Ions, Trina? I was not. Gosh, you look so familiar. Okay. From memory, so. you were in Denver. Oh, okay. I was like, I know her from somewhere. Uh, well, you know, when uh, when I was at Ions uh, with Kathy. Hurricane Dorian was headed straight at us, all right? So, and, you know, and I live on the barrier island, which, you know, when there's not a hurricane, it's great, you know. Um, but it's 90 <laughs> degrees outside today, so I feel sorry for all the little trick-or-treaters late later, unless they're, you know, 
in bathing suits, I guess, which in Florida is not unusual. So at any rate, Trina, I'm getting a male energy coming through connected to you. Now, what's going on with him is I'm getting this blinking sensation like this, which is an indicator of difficulty with his mental focus and clarity prior to passing. And I'm also... Um, I'm once again getting breathing issues, but I'm I'm feeling a lot of smoke. So he was either uh, subjected to a lot of smoke inhalation or was a very heavy smoker prior to passing. And I'm getting burning sensations in my lower lungs and also in the area of my pancreas. So this burning sensations can indicate this could be pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer, or some issue with like diabetes because it's focused very heavily on the pancreas. Does this make sense to you in any way? For a couple people. That's fine because they come in in tandem and in a group. Is your dad one of these people? No. Okay. It's your dad on the other side? No. Okay. So it's not your dad, but the thing, the reason I'm asking is your dad because he feels like he's on the level above you, which would be the parent, aunt, uncle level. And he is showing me the Scorpio time frame, which we are in right now, which is roughly October 20th to November 20th. This could be an indicator of births, deaths, anniversaries, or events connected to him or to you or someone close to you within the Scorpio time frame. Does mm -hmm. that make sense in any way? And remember, it doesn't have to apply to him. It can apply to you as well. Yeah. Um, there's events around a couple of them that fall within Scorpio. So. All right. This guy, now he's showing me like his, his hand and I'm getting this, this um, he could have had either a stroke or some type of neurological issue, but I'm getting, you see what's going on with my hand? So I'm getting like a paralysis or a neurological difficulty. Now I'm feeling issues in my, um, in my collarbones. Oh, okay. Now I get it. Um, now I'm feeling issues through my bones entirely. This feels like cancer, which metastasized and got into his bones. Does that, does that resonate with you? No. All right. How about no, not no. at this time? We're going to yank you off the no, no, no train too. Yeah, yeah. not okay. at this time. All right. So let me explain. Um, different medical conditions may have a similar sensation to me. So I'm getting neurological issues. I'm getting uh, situations going through his bones. Um, I'm getting this, this, um, and it could, once again, it could be a man who could have had Parkinson's or he could have had some other type of neurological difficulties. But he's focusing on you now, and what he's telling me is he keeps talking about some type of documents that, that we're getting a lot of distortion in the background. Do you have any idea what that is, Kathy? I keep hearing like, whew, 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 and it's what probably, that is. It's probably me. Sorry. I, yeah, I'm, because what happens is that's severing my link with the other I'm sorry, side. I'll, I'll every, yeah, if we, could, if we could just settle down on the background, because that's a frequency overlap, and it's, it's, it's causing a lot of difficulty. Okay. Um, Trina, what they're talking to me about, is some type of documents that you're dealing with right now. And there's talking about Scrivener's error. So there could be some type of legal or financial document going on with you right now where there's some type of problem. Okay. Okay. So are you doing any type of legal, financial, real estate transaction? Um, Always. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Good, good, good. Well, there's one... And it's interesting, Scorpio time frame, we're getting something around the 11th, which would be like um, Veterans Day. And uh -huh. there's some, some documents, something there. And I keep hearing Scrivener's error, Scrivener's error over and over. So you got to check the documents to make sure that there's no inconsistencies or problems with a date. With a date. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's interesting. Why do you say that? Well, there's just some transactions and things going on. So that's really helpful. And I'm, um, there's two gentlemen I can think of that have fit the, the descriptions of what you've, um, Okay, one, one of them is stepping forward, and he just handed me a ruby. Now, rubies are cool because that could be July, birthstone mm -hmm. for the month of July, birthstone anniversaries or events with July. could also be a name like Ruby or Rudy, um, unless July or rubies make sense to you in any shape, form, or fashion. Well, my, my, um, dad's, my dad was born in July, and my dad's father is one of the people that 
Um, Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so your your dad's father was born in July, and your father was born in July. No, my okay. father was born in July, July, but my dad's father wasn't. Yeah. Okay. All right, but your dad. Your dad, dad was born in July. Okay, so this would be your paternal grandfather, who's the one mm -hmm. that's communicating. Okay. okay. Um, is there any connection with you in Northern California? Been there, connections there, something going on with you? Hold on before we know, no, no, and I see you shaking your head. That could mean you've ever been there or connections there. Reason being is when spirits start showing me piles of raisins, and I know this sounds funny, that's my indicator for Northern California because of the vineyards. However, raisins, I'm getting still getting a lot of distortion. I kind of think it's coming from Trina's end now. Okay, um, that's my indicator for um, Northern California, but also raisins are an indicator for issues with iron. So they're focusing on you and talking about iron and cow. All right, we're going to have to, I'm sorry, Trina, I'm going to have to let you go. The, uh, the, the feedback is screeching in my ears, so I don't know what's happening, but I'm going to have to let you go. All okay. Right. So I'm Thank sorry, you. but I, I, it's, I, I can't do this because it's like wah, 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 in my ears okay. and it's, it's, it's completely severing the contact. Okay. But I'll just check, check your iron and protein levels. All right. Thank you. Right. I'll tell you the vineyards, the vineyard piece. My yes. grandfather is Italian and his, they made wine all the time too. Bingo. And and normally when I do readings, I spend about 15 minutes explaining ahead of time. Uh -huh. And one message can have more than one level of significance, but your interpretation is always more important than mine because I'm just the conduit. Um, and the thing is, I don't mean to, to cut you off, but the, the feedback on my it's end, okay. it's, it's like I, I can't handle it. Okay. Right. So, Thanks. yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah, that's why these Facebook and Skype shows are always so difficult. And, right. and the reason is that everything that I do is about frequency, and I'm hypersensitive to frequency. Why? Because what I'm doing is tuning into the higher frequency of another dimension, the other side. So if I have like <laughs> sounds going on, like what's in the background, it 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 is uh, directly severing the connection with the spirits. And I really wanted because Atrina's uh, grandfather was really starting to connect. But but when we have that type of problem, so that's why I'm asking her to be very cognizant of feedback and sound quality issues because I want you to get the best reading possible. So, okay. Okay, so this is a, a friend, Lane, who was a year ahead of me in high school and was in my... All right, all right, all right. Uh, Kathy, what I don't want you to do is to give me people's biographies and life histories. And okay, reason no being is... When I do a reading, and it's a very strict policy that I have, I don't want to know anything about the person ahead okay. of time because information might have come through about your connection with her. Okay, so I'm just instructing. I'm not, I'm not, not criticizing um, because a lot of times people think they're being helpful by telling me things. But, see, that's the difference between a legitimate medium and someone who's cold reading when they're searching for for clues like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So good morning, Lane. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank I can you. barely see you. I need to bring your camera down a tad. There you are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm getting a male energy coming through connected to you, and what I'm getting is the slamming sensation in my body. And when I get an abrupt slamming sensation, this is an indicator of either an unexpected or abrupt pathing. Um, he feels like he could be, uh, if not on your level, but the one below it, which would mean like child, niece, nephew. Um, and what he's telling me, I am tasting a lot of blood, and I know that this can be very upsetting. Um, the blood doesn't always mean like a major bleed out. could have been an internal hemorrhage. But what I am getting with him is this impact sensation to my head, and I feel that he didn't die immediately, but it was pretty soon afterwards. Um, the, the sensations now to the impact on my knees, to my chest and sternum, and, and um, to my clavicle and shoulder, this feels like a traumatic uh, impact. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Is this your son? Yes. 
Okay. He is so thrilled that you are here, and he is sending you this big red heart, which I think that one we understand. I love you, love you, love you, love, love you. And he showed me the eight of diamonds, eight of diamonds, eight of diamonds. Interesting. Eight could mean the eighth of any month. It could mean the eighth month, like August, but diamonds are the birthstone for the month of April. So um, does any of that make sense to you? This is your first no. <laughs> All right. How about my first not at this time? Not at this okay, time. Okay, because he could be referencing the month of April connected to you in some way or to him in some way or the eighth of any month. Okay, so so be very careful about no, no, no. All right, now, what he wants you to know is that, do you burn candles for him? He keeps uh, showing this candle, this candle, this candle, you with a candle. I'm Catholic, so we're always burning Italian, so we burn candles all the time. But he's talking about you and a candle, like where you sit and look at a candle, and it's like this concentrated focus. Does that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. OK, and he is acknowledging that when you do that, um, it's like you talk to him mentally and he says that he hears you. All right. And he's showing like I, I want to take my hands and put them in good, rich, black earth. And I'm smelling fresh earth and I'm seeing ladybugs, which are uh, I love ladybugs because they're my indicator of gardens and gardening. So was he the gardener? Are you the gardener? Who's, I'm the gardener. You're the gardener. OK, the gardener. so so he's he's acknowledging that. Oh and. My gosh. Yeah, and I, um, I just planted. Someone gave me a, a bunch of seeds to plant a garden for him. Exactly. That's what I was, I was. Yes, that's where that was headed. The memorial garden. Uh, it's it's fascinating because um, whenever I see an image of Saint Francis of Assisi, um, that's my indicator for for the memorial garden. But I'm also getting his love of animals. His yeah. love of animals. Does that make sense? Yes. I can yes. see him holding a dog, like a, not a big dog, but a mid-sized, you know, a smaller dog. And your son had, and who's Edward? Edward. Edward. Oh, Lord. Ed that's, that's our uncle. That's our, is he on the yeah. other side? Oh, yes. Okay. So your son's over there with Edward. Oh, my All God. right. And um, he said, Mom, um, anything but alone, have a cantaloupe. What's with you and cantaloupes? I don't know. Maybe it's dad loves cantaloupe. <laughs> Who loves cantaloupes? His his father. Okay. So a cantaloupe is his way of saying, give my love oh, to dad. God. Okay. Oh, he goes, mom, have a cantaloupe. Okay. And I'll tell you, your son was hilarious. Uh, it still is. And he, he said that he always enjoyed making you laugh and doing funny things. Um, and he said, but since he's passed, it's as if the light has gone out of her eyes. And that's why he brought up the candle before. He said, because when you look at it, you're looking for his light. And he says, Mom, my light is all around you. And he wants you to start laughing again. If, he do, if I don't say this, he's going to be very upset with me. Is there some funny story about him, like, passing some gas? Oh, probably always. <laughs> okay. I mean, he's talking about the, pardon me, the fart story. And it's like, usually when they say things like that, and that's part of how he could be really funny, oh is what God. he's saying. Um, and what's with, all right, I know today is Halloween, so I'm seeing images of spiders. Spiders, yeah, I mean, not too many people like spiders, but that could be someone that's got a profound fear or dislike of spiders. Or, this could be an indicator of something, let's say, a week either side of today, because spiders is an indicator of, of Halloween, which could be a significant birth, death, anniversary, or event connected to you or him or someone close to you, let's say, a week either side of today. Yes. In what way, yes? Uh, death. Was, all right, whose death? Um, well, he died. My dad died. And... Um, and Edward died. Okay. But not well, not the same year. That, no, no, but within this time frame. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I'm getting the spider. That's why I'm getting this this time frame. Um, and your his dad's still here in this world, yes? Yes. Okay. But your dad is on the other side, correct? correct? 
Correct. Okay, so that's also an indicator that he's over there with your dad. Let's see if we can get your dad to come okay. through. Ow, I'm getting a lot of pains in my legs and shins. Was your oh, dad having oh. issues? Okay, that, that looks like a yes based on your response. Um, what your dad, oh, wow, this feels like massive orthopedic injuries, problems, neurological with your dad. And he says, all right, I'm just telling you that to, to let you know it's me. He goes, but I feel great. Okay, and I'm hearing, fly me to the moon. Da, 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 da. That's a Frank Sinatra song, and I'm getting cold chills and tingles. So interesting. Second time the name Frank, first was St. Francis of Assisi. Now we're getting Frank Sinatra, and I'm hearing your dad humming and singing, fly me to the moon. Does that make any sense to you? Yeah. In yes. what way? Well, he loved to sing and he loved to dance. Okay. Anything in particular with Frank Sinatra? Um, I'm sure he loved Frank Sinatra. That, that's uh, a yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Um, let me see what else your dad. Um, oh, 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 all three of them. Edward, your son, and, and your dad are a very merry birthday to you, to oh. you, a very merry birthday to you. Okay, so that would indicate three weeks either side of today, significant births, deaths, anniversaries, or events connected to you or someone close to you in some way. And it can also be a reference to a variation on the name Alice, because that's from Alice in Wonderland. Alice, Alicia, Liza, Elizabeth. Any of that makes sense? And not right now. Hold on, but you did react to the very Marianne birthday. Why? Yes, um, because... because uh, I sing a birthday song like that that doesn't make sense when everybody has a birthday. <laughs> okay, now, my interpretation, remember I was explaining to, to uh, Trina, my interpretation doesn't matter, yours does. So what happens is I get certain symbols or songs or things that may mean one thing to me, but something completely different to you. We always go with your interpretation over mine because I'm just the conduit for the information, okay? So they're all, these, these three are a stitch, okay? And um, I'm red, so glad they're together. Red Rock. Red Rock. <sighs> okay, I know there's a Red Rock Canyon in near Las Vegas. I know there's a Red Rock Canyon in Colorado, but they keep talking about Red Rock. Does Red Rock make sense? Kathy, um, you seem like you're indicating yes. Do you know how that would make sense? Yeah, in what way? Yeah, I yes. Because go, go ahead, Lane. We uh, just went down to Norris Lake to celebrate my son's, my, his birthday, my dead son's birthday. And Norris Lake is all, it's a man-made lake and it's all red rock. Okay. All and right. All red rock. Perfect. Okay. So see your interpretation, more important yeah. than mine. Yeah. And what it is, you just went down there and they're letting <laughs> you know that they are around you and aware of what's happening with you because they went with you. Okay. Oh, yeah. um, okay. Did, did you have some difficulty with your car? Yes. Um, okay. <laughs> um, was it, Okay. Yeah. They're, they're, they're saying you avoided a near mishap. Okay. So, so they're, they're letting you know about that. Was that uh, on the Red Rock trip? No, no, okay. I, uh, no. Is it front end of the car? Uh, like uh, steering? Because I'm getting something at the front uh, end or steering. Get underneath. Underneath. Gas tank. Okay. So I, um, um, still picking okay. up on something on the okay. front end of your car. Okay. okay. So you My husband almost hit a giant deer and missed it by an inch the other day. Okay, so I'll go, I'll go at the front end of the car on that one. <laughs> I, I assume he did try to back into the deer. He was driving the front ways. Okay, so so see how they're letting you know that they're around. And Michael, 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 Michael. Okay, they're giving me the name Michael. And what's interesting is when I get Michael, it's because I see images of the Archangel Michael, and which can be my trigger for the name uh, Michael, but it also is an indicator um, of angels, and it could be someone who collects 
angels or likes images of angels or something about the you know the archangel Michael. Does that make sense to you in any way? Not right now. It will. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is a really strong one. Archangel Michael. When you think of that image, what comes to mind? Uh, is that like a St. Christopher's medal? Well, it can be. Archangel Michael, um, and I don't bring up things like angels lightly. When a spirit transmits that to me, that could indicate um, Archangel Michael is a protective energy, like we're watching over you. So that's probably what they're getting at here. But this could also be the indicator of somebody named Michael, either on the other side or this side, connected to you. And, of course, we all know somebody or several somebodies named Michael, but this is of significance. So, Okay. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll remember that. Okay, so thank you very much, Lane, for letting me do this for you. Oh, oh my very God. sorry for your losses. Thank you. Thank God you. God bless. Here are several somebody's named Michael, but this is of significance. So. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll I'll remember that. Okay, so thank you very much, Lane, for letting me do this for you. Oh, oh my very God. sorry for your losses. Thank you. God bless. Right. Here are several somebody's Facebook off. So, okay. Darlis, turn your Facebook off. I remember that. Facebook okay. So, thank you very much, Lane, for letting me do this for you. Oh, oh, very sorry if you're now, now. Sorry. Sorry. Facebook off. Facebook off. Okay. Okay. There. All right, Matter. Yeah, you got to realize it's like stabbing me in both ears with screwdrivers. Oh. It doesn't help with the reading. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Golly, thank you for doing all of this, Mark. That's amazing. That was ama amazing. It, amazing. Thank you. Charles, did you have a male on your generational level? It could be a brother or a close friend um, who passed because I'm getting a male energy coming in associated with you. And what I'm getting with him is I feel like I'm getting hit in the stomach, which could indicate that he was having massive problems in his stomach or abdominal region. Um, and I'm getting a doubling over. Um, uh, oh, I feel like I'm vomiting. And the vomiting and nausea sensation is an indicator that he was having difficulty eating and or holding down food prior to passing. Vomiting and that nausea can also be a cancer indicator. Doesn't always mean that he had cancer. It's making sense to you? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. And um, daisies, 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 daisies. Now, most people like daisies. They're beautiful flowers. But when he focuses on you, I'm seeing daisies everywhere. Does, does the name daisy or daisies make sense in some way? Mm, yes. In what way, yes? Well, um, that was one of his favorite flowers. And I think he sees me differently now that he's on the other side. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's not. Let's not interpret, okay? Just yet, okay? okay. okay. Uh, um, okay. Let, let me okay. bring through the information, then you can interpret it. Okay, so okay. Uh, let's see what else he would like um, you to know. Um, interesting. This is weird. He's showing me Harrison, Harrison, Harrison. And for some reason, I keep seeing, you know, I think of Harrison Ford. But he's talking about Harrison, Harrison. It could be a place, could be somebody's last name, but he's giving me Harrison, Harrison. Does that make any sense to you? Mm. Nothing right off the tip of my that, mind. That's fine. Um, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Hang okay. on to that. And now I'm hearing the Beatles mm -hmm. singing, Hey Jude. I'm hearing, Hey Jude, don't make it bad. Oh, okay. Now, look, um, even though they weren't my generation, I love the Beatles. I think they were great. But the thing is, um, take a sad song and make it better. And that's what he's mm -hmm. saying. That's the message he's conveying to you. And what he wants you to know, Darlis, is he said that you've done a very good job in your life of taking the lemons, the lemons, the sadness that has been hurled at you. It's like catapults of like these flaming, you know, disasters. And he said, yet she scoops all those lemons up and turns them into lemonade and you've done such a wonderful job of of doing that and he said that you are also a master of self-reflection that you will look at yourself and your behaviors 
And you, he said, sometimes you're the hardest person ever on yourself because you're always looking for ways to improve what you're doing, how people perceive you, not because of, of what others think of you, but you want to be the best that you can possibly be. And so he's, he's letting you know that. And he's presenting me now with a beautiful shamrock. Okay, now a shamrock, a four-leaf clover, could be an indicator of someone of Irish descent or some connection to Ireland. However, it's also my trigger for the month of March because of St. Patrick's Day. So what it is, like we have words like uh, like there that could be several different things, but it could be a Pat Patrick Patricia, the month of March, births, deaths, anniversaries, or events, or um, someone connected to Ireland, Irish heritage. Um, any of that makes sense? Yes. In what way? Do you want more information? <laughs> and, and I'll, let, I'll um, let you explain because I've given you okay, my interpretation okay. on that. Yeah, go ahead. So my birth name is McRae. Okay. Very Irish. Okay, we'll go with and, that. And a big and a large, large anniversary for me is in I, March. I, I have a large happy. anniversary for my personal in March. Okay, you're breaking up. I can barely hear you. Okay. I also have a large uh, personal anniversary in March. So both of those make sense. Yeah, see, one, one message can have more than one level of significance and mean more than, it's like the sound morning. Is it time of day or an emotional state? So if morning came through and it mm -hmm. applied to both, okay, you see, and it's the same thing with that. So he's acknowledging that and he's taking a ring He's taking a ring off the ring finger on his left hand and giving it to you. Now, huh, uh, the reason I'm going, huh, is that doesn't necessarily mean the two of you are married, but there is some major significance of, of a ring that he is giving to you. Does this make any sense? Don't overthink it. Let's go with the very first yeah. thing that comes to mind, ring finger or ring. Okay. Well, well, ring finger. He was married to my mother. Okay. Is your mom in this world? Okay. Yes. All right. So let's see if he wants to give your, is your mother having any issues with her gallbladder? Do you know? In other words, uh, is she having some pain in digestive issues? Because he's focusing on her gallbladder. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Um, stand by. Interesting. Your mom's diet is all wrong. Um, it's all wrong. It's too many acidic foods, too many sugary processed foods. What it is, there's a buildup of sugar, which is leading to uh, acidity, which is leading to acidosis, and that is aggravating her gallbladder uh, condition. And so she's got to be eating, he says, you know, cleaner cleaner foods. I mean, of course, we all need to be eating green leafy vegetables. We understand that. But he is underscoring that. And um, also, he wants her to know that he always felt she was the prettiest girl in the room. And he wants her to know that he still feels that way. So if you would please pass that on to him. And he's giving me, he's, he's I'm, I'm seeing Jim or James that could be connected to you or him in some way. But then, of course, we all know Jim's and James, but he's giving me James, James. And what he's doing is holding open the Bible, and I'm opening it, and I'm getting James. So I don't know if that's, you know, the name James or the King James version of the Bible, but he has shown me the um, James. I'll keep that one. I'm not quite sure what it means right now, but That's okay. something will come up. Yeah, just out of curiosity, yeah. any connection you, him, your mom, uh, of significance with the state of Virginia? Like ever been there? Any connections there? Um, I've been there. He lived close to there. Well, what it is, because James could also be like a Jamestown reference, which is one of the ways they get me to the state of Virginia. Jamestown. In what way? Um, no, I nothing's coming up right now. That's fine. 
Um, but he keeps giving me James, James. I don't want to like, and once again, that could be like a, a place like a St. James Street or Jamestown or something with James. So. All right. Oh, just out of curiosity, any significance with you in the number 17? Could be the 17th of any month or so. You're smiling. Why? Um, <laughs> well, I'm a big Q follower, so that equals number 17 in the alphabet. Okay. Oh, uh, the letter Q is the number 17? <laughs> I'll go with that. <laughs> and what's fun is that I, I you know, I'm, in, I'm in sure if I counted it, I would know it, but I didn't think about that. So there, yeah. there's something there, okay. Um, and you like the letter Q. Hold on. He's holding up a piece of jade. Jade. It's a beautiful green stone jade. And um, does jade or that jade green color make sense to you in any way? Absolutely. Yeah, I use, um, I use a Maori stone in some of my dowsing work. Okay. And is jade one of those? Okay. So he's acknowledging yes, that. Oh, well, thanks. I'll leave that with you. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. You're very thanks, welcome. Thanks, Kathy. God bless you. Okay, so you're off the clock now. You can <laughs> you can well, relax, so we can just talk. I mean, there's other people that want to come, but but let's just talk a little bit so that you can share. I've been putting up your website so that people know about your book and are able if they're yeah, yeah. If, if I could, I've got two books, Never Letting Go and Evidence okay. of Eternity. Never Letting Go is recommended by hospices and grief counselors around the world. Um, and never and Evidence of Eternity was actually up for a Pulitzer Prize, which uh, I was very honored and, and humbled. Both my books are in several languages. Um, you can find out about them at evidenceofeternity.com. I've got a lot of events coming up. I'll be in Houston next week at Body, Mind, and Soul on Katy Freeway for two nights of spirit communication. Then on November 23rd in Maitland, Florida, just outside of Orlando, I'll be doing an evening of spirit communication for an organization gr from Grief to Hope. And from Grief to Hope is, is a support group for parents who've lost children. And um, this is a, a charity event uh, that I'm doing. And then in December, I will be um, at Aquarian Dreams in Central Florida for an evening of spirit communication on Saturday, December 7th. And then the following weekend, I will be in Sarasota, Florida. On Friday the 13th, I'm doing the um, a special lecture. Um, I'm also known as the Psychic Explorer, and mm -hmm. I've traveled around the world studying mystical and, and sacred and ancient sites and visited ancient ruins all over all over the world. And uh, my, my passions have always been not only spirit communication, but history, archaeology, philosophy, theology, quantum physics. And on Friday, December 13th, I'm presenting the Mystical Magi. The Mystery of the Star of Bethlehem, and I will be presenting this using a very colorful PowerPoint presentation to show uh, how it was not a star in the sky, but something much more complex and a unique astrological phenomenon. And let me tell you something: don't don't expect a dry, boring lecture. All right, <laughs> this is gonna this is gonna keep you going. And then the following evening on Saturday, December fourteenth, at the Sarasota Center of Light, where both events will be, then I'll be doing an evening of spirit communication. <laughs> and then, of course, I've got my twenty twenty uh, U.S. Uh, and actually international tour coming up but uh, this this year I'll be um, in in uh, for the balance of the year in Houston uh, on the 8th 9th and 10th of, of November then I'll be uh, in Melbourne Florida area on December 7th Sarasota on the 13th and 14th and of course the special event on Saturday uh, November let me make sure I got the the date on that 
November 23rd, From Grief to Hope. Uh, and of course, even though it's a bereavement group for parents, the public is welcome to this event because I will be connecting random audience members with loved ones in spirit. And to find out about all that, and, and Kathy just put up my, my website, Evidence of Eternity. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, evidenceofeternity.com. Please, if you join my uh, go to my website, join my newsletter. That'll keep you updated on everything. Oh, well, thank you so much for your generosity. I, I do have one question about Halloween. Um, are the, what, okay, so. I know, so, we're, we're talking to Halloween. We got to, woo. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Halloween. So, so. Are, are spirits more available now? I mean, I feel like the veils are down. I can, I, it seems like I can connect really You easily. know, it, it's, it's really funny because I hear a lot of mediums, and with all due respect to my colleagues, they say the veil between this side and the other side is thinner at Halloween. You know, that would assume that not only our universe, but the multiverses and the infinite creation of God is somehow dependent on a Northern European agricultural <laughs> festival of harvest. So, no, the, the veil is not any closer today than it is any other time. But this time of year, symbolically, is the harvest where people are preparing for the winter. Now, in, in modern America, Europe, you know, Japan, Australia, food is not an issue. And we pop over to the grocery store and, and we buy food, fresh, frozen, whatever, processed, and it's never a problem. But in a pre-electrical society, what be, began to happen is that the harvest was done, winter was coming, and people would starve to death. And it became a dark time of the year. And the harvest was the begin beginning of this. And in the uh, Catholic religion, November 1st is All Saints Day, where all the saints are venerated. Um, November 2nd is All Souls Day, where we acknowledge uh, those, our loved ones who've passed. And in the Latino world is um, Dia de los Muertos, which this yes. year, the Day of the Dead is being celebrated between today, Halloween, and November 2nd. And oh. that's where we honor those who've gone before us. And what's fascinating about uh, Dia de los Muertos is that when the, the Spanish invaded um, Central and South America, they found out that the Aztecs the, and the uh, Mexica tribes of Mexico had this Day of the Dead, and there was a melding of the Native American and the Spanish culture. So the church decided to go ahead and put All Souls Day on November 2nd to coincide with Dia de los Muertos. And so it's actually an ancient Central American uh, festival to honor those who passed before us. And Halloween uh, emanated pretty much in the British Isles. They used to call it Sam Wayne. And the reason that we do pumpkins is people felt that demons and devils would walk the earth the, the day before um, All Saints Day. So they would carve gourds with these scary faces and put lights in them to ward off evil spirits. Then, of course, when English colonists came to North America, uh, pumpkins were readily available. And so now we started carving pumpkins. Right. And, uh, and people used to, used to go from door to door on, on Sam Wayne, and they were given uh, sweet treats basically to, to ward away evil spirits. And, uh -huh. Thanks to modern capitalism, this turned into trick or treat and a multi billion dollar business. So here we are. <laughs> I'd say the only thing getting closer um, on Halloween is us, um, our, our money is getting closer to the stores than it is to us. <laughs> it, it's not closer, it's further away. That's yeah, it's further away. Oh, that's so funny. Well, thank you again for your generosity here Smart today fun. with us and everything you do you're just an amazing being and a delight to be with and and uh someday so it, I, of course there were many more hands up but but uh thank you for everything you did and i'm sure these people will really um get a chance to figure out what all the messages meant and 
Well, it, it, it takes time for that. And if people would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one reading with me, and I do readings over the phone, and that way I have more time to spend with you, please go to my website, evidenceofeternity.com. You can schedule a phone reading. Uh, we're booking, uh, there's a few dates left in December, but now we're starting to book into 2020 because I'm usually booked months in months in advance. And, um, it, you know, it's it's my pleasure and my honor to to help people cope with the loss of a loved one by facilitating communication, and uh, it's always difficult on a show because we're putting a, you know more for the recipient because they're being put on the spot you know, yeah. and they have to think about things. They realize they're on camera, but in a one on one, we've got the time to to connect with your spirits and to explain, um, and they can explain what's going on in your life and the nature of the afterlife, which is always fascinating. So, right. so thank, thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Yes. And, and so much of this is so available. We, there's uh, there with the IONS group, which is, I met Mark um, actually because you were at journeys for conscious living. I helped market for your event. And then, and then I got to meet you in person at IONS. So I'm just so grateful. And um I hope everyone enjoyed it, and and that was amazing. That was amazing because I I knew. I mean, you could see me. I had my Kleenex for part of it. I mean, that, that was amazing, amazing. So thank you so much. I hope we get to do this again. I look forward to it. Yeah, thank you, and uh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Happy Halloween, everyone. Uh, Be yeah, careful. Uh, thank you. I guess it's not quite the weekend, but thank you. Oh, so, uh, we, uh, we, we just had some people join us. Oh, well, bye-bye. <laughs> Too late. It's a long time. Thank you, Mark. So grateful.